Hi, I am an angry little plant and if you were looking for uh, an instructional video on how to navigate data privacy, you're going to have to wait a little bit. This is not that. You might want to click away. This is just me discussing what are the issues in the field right now and the things I'm trying to navigate as a student trying to break into data privacy law. So thank you for joining me and uh, I have made some tea for you. I think this would it would be nice if you had a cup as well. I'll keep it right here for you to sip on. And this is mine. So let's begin. The first issue that I have been experiencing in data privacy is I think almost everyone is experiencing this in the market is confusion around what is valued. So if you speak to veterans in this field, they will often tell you that experience matters way more than any certification could. That being said, I have tried to ask people where to get said experience from. Where should I apply? What should I do? Some people who weren't really aware of how the job market is working right now told me consultancies. And it's not really, it's not, they don't really have those positions open for an intern who hasn't graduated to deal with that data. And I understand why, because you're dealing with sensitive data, not sensitive data in the legal terms, not SPDI rules related data, but like sensitive data as in data you want to keep confidential of your clients and you don't want a clumsy intern dealing with that. But unless you have that, it's very difficult to actually gain experience. Now, in order to actually ensure that your clumsy intern doesn't do things badly, the clumsy intern needs training. And those trainings look like certifications. I know security.ai, OneTrust, I think big idea as well. They have a lot of uh, free training. And I actually uh, found a really useful website, Forager, that had a whole bunch of free training courses. I'll put that in the description. Uh, that, that, you know, it provides you the basics of what you need to know when you are working. But the problem is that those are not qualifications that are often considered when you put them on your resume. I know that all the people who have spoken to me have told me that they value it, but it's nowhere close to the certifications that are like, you know, the hallmark of this person knows what they're doing. So that would be your any of your IAPP certifications, CIPM, CIPP, and uh, there are other certifications as well. I just can't recall which ones are they, but there are. I will put that in the description as well. Everything I forget to talk about in this video will be there in the description. How about that? Great. <laughs> so you have to get those certifications to be able to be considered for the job because that's the eligibility. So the confusion around this, I think, is also that people don't know what they're looking for. People don't know what they want in the sense of there are hierarchies even within data privacy professionals. Some people are specialists, some people are professionals, some people are DPOs. Like I'm not saying it in the exact org chart format, but you know, some people are higher than the others. And often they ask interns for the qualifications you would ask off of a consultant and often the the, the certifications they are asking for are very, very expensive. I don't know how many internship positions I've seen that ask for IAPP certifications. And it just, it's like they don't even know that the certification itself will cost you anywhere between 30 to 50,000. And that's just the exam, not even the training. So when you are doing a training that is, let's just say, sweet spot 45K, right? and you step into the market, you expect an equal remuneration. And that just doesn't seem to happen. I'm not telling you pay me 50K per month, but like 10K, 12K is like really pushing it. And especially if you ask a person to relocate to your you know, city and then have them do an internship with you, it's, it's not nice, it's not kind to have them survive on 10 or 12K. And the 
the idea that people have behind this is that hey i am training you so why you should you be getting paid more but that like applies to any organization all bosses are teaching their juniors how to work so it just feels like if you will not be able to have a good apprentice or a good intern who deals with your work diligently if they are not satisfied with the remuneration they receive so having discussed this the end point here is that it becomes a catch 22 situation you want an intern you want the intern to have certain certifications and the certifications are expensive so they have to pay money but you are not willing to pay money back to them so how will they do the said i mean you know it's just it becomes less accessible to people who can't make that one time investment to get those certifications Am I one of those people? I don't think so. I do have plans to give the IAPP certifications and I'm currently planning to just finish all of the one trust big ID security AI certifications that exist in different different domains. But there also I think a lot of uh, certifications that one trust provides, right? They're not available to people who are not clients or partners. So like you need you need money if you're trying to step in here and i will not tell anyone otherwise now talking about how to enter into the field that is like a huge question because law firms consultancies and anyone else that is like ngos right policy firms they deal with different parts of the same thing so somebody who is in consultancy is usually dealing in things that a law firm wouldn't touch maybe they don't earn enough out of it or maybe that's just not their expertise but they don't touch each other's fields and i feel like there's a lack of knowledge on how these three operate separately and how to how to prepare yourself to work in these three differently i i spent like three of my internships trying to figure out law firms and what law firms work in within data privacy before i actually decided that oh maybe this life is not for me and i think i will keep believing that unless something great comes my way and then step into consultancy consultancies don't have very open job opportunities like they don't they barely have internships for law students especially it consultancies and when they do have opportunities for law students they are they're not exactly sure of what the qualifications of a law student are which i don't expect them to but i just really wished that legal professionals within consultancies would actually nudge the hr to understand how things work for us plus i don't think consultancies like the good ones at this moment are okay with having law students deal with their material which brings us to startups now i think startups can be a really good opportunity to learn but startups also have limited resources with them which means that often you're overworked you are doing things that you're not even sure of because the person who manages the startup is not sure of what they're doing but you learn somewhere i i don't think you'll get the ideal work experience anywhere currently i'm hoping to be able to i this is bad language non manifestation language okay we use manifestation language i am going to get somewhere i have a decent work life balance and there is scope for growth and once i figure it all out i will put all of my knowledge right here i'm gonna i'm not gonna gatekeep maybe gatekeep a little bit the niche things that i've put in a lot of effort into figuring out but yeah the usual things on how to go about this i'm just gonna make that freely accessible and available <sighs> on that note thank you for sitting with me i see that you did not drink any of the tea i gave you that's okay it's okay Hydrate yourself and I hope you have a wonderful day.